Some folks call this a subsonic filter. It's actually an infrasonic filter. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and in today's adventure, I'm going to show you how to tell if you need one, and if you do need one, how to set it up correctly. An infrasonic filter is just a high-pass crossover. Stick around to the end if you want to find out more about how to set a high-pass crossover. This filter is designed to remove ultra-low bass. Why the hell would you want to do that? In order to make low frequencies, a sub has to move a lot of air. The further in or out the cone moves, the more air the speaker is going to move. This is called excursion. But the cone can only move so far. There are two different ways to express the physical limitations of cone travel. The first is Xmax. It's the distance the cone can move in one direction without leaving the magnetic field generated by the magnet. Here's a cone with a voice coil attached. The coil sits inside of a gap in the magnet, and if the coil moves too far out, it leaves that magnetic field and the amplifier can no longer control the cone movement. It becomes non-linear. It sounds bad. It's a type of distortion. The second is x mech and it's a physical limit to how far the cone can move. If it moves too far in, it might slam into the back plate. You'll actually hear a loud whack or crack if this happens. It's not a happy sound. There are three important things to know about cone excursion. The first is that the air inside the subwoofer enclosure acts as a spring. If you've got a very small sealed box, it's going to be a very tightly wound spring. If you've got a huge sealed box, it's going to be a very weak spring. If the box gets big enough, it'll be operating in free air, meaning it may as well not even be in a box. Second, lower notes are going to require more excursion. Third, in a ported box below the tuning frequency, you're essentially going to be playing in free air. If you're running a ported enclosure and you try to dig down really low with the volume at full tilt, you're going to exceed x max very easily, and you may even exceed x mech. When that happens, you're going to need a new subwoofer. I'll put a link to some subwoofers down in the description. Sometimes it helps to get visual. Let's jump into WinISD. For this example, I'm using a 10-inch Dayton Audio Ultimax subwoofer. This thing has an X max of 19 millimeters, and that's going to be the red line on this plot. The blue line is the excursion for the same subwoofer in a small sealed box. As you can see, it never goes above the red line, so this setup is not going to need a subsonic filter. In fact, very few sealed enclosures need a subsonic filter. The yellow line is for a 1.5 cubic foot ported box. As you can see, at any frequency below about 25 hertz, you're going to exceed X max. But honestly, how often do you play notes that low? So for this setup, you can probably get away without using an infrasonic filter. But let's activate one anyway and see what happens. The rule of thumb is to set the filter at half an octave below the port tuning frequency. So the tuning frequency on this design is 40 hertz. My test amp uses a 24 decibel per octave infrasonic filter, so we can probably get away with a lower frequency, especially for this particular setup. Now, if you're not using WinISD or some similar software, the rule of thumb is to set the subsonic filter at one half an octave below the port tuning frequency. So this one's tuned to 40 hertz, a full octave would be 20 hertz, one half an octave would be 30 hertz. Since my test amp uses a 24 decibel per octave filter and I really don't need a subsonic filter, I'm gonna set the filter for this example at a full one octave below my tuning frequency, so 20 hertz, which just happens to be the minimum frequency on the subsonic filter that I'm using. Bam, there we go. Excursion stays well below X max and we can play a 20 hertz test tone at full blast for a little while. Now let's dial this in on the amplifier. We're going to be using two rules of thumb here. The first rule of thumb is that at the crossover point, you should be down by three decibels, so negative three dB. This may be different depending on the type of crossover that you're using. I've got several videos on how to set up crossovers. I'll make sure to give you some links to those as well. It's just a rule of thumb. It's designed to get you close. The trick here is to convert decibels to voltage. The digital multimeter that we use doesn't have a dB readout on it, it just shows voltage. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a test tone through the amplifier, we're gonna read that voltage, and we're gonna multiply that voltage by 0 0.708, and that'll get us three decibels down. The second rule of thumb is that our crossover point has to be one half of an octave below our tuning frequency. So just take the tuning frequency and multiply by 0.75. Just to make the math easy, I'm setting the tuning frequency equal to 40, and 40 times 0.75 is just 30. Let's hook the amp up and play a 30 hertz test tone. 
power ground remote turn on RCAs. I'm playing some test tones from the bass mechanic and I'm just using an aux cable from my phone into the amplifier. It's always best to set the gain before you set the crossover. And after you do that, the volume that you use when setting the crossovers really isn't that important. So what I like to do is to set the volume so that I get a voltage that'll make the math a lot easier. So I turn the volume up till I get about 10 volts. You, you don't want to set it to something big like 100 volts. That'd be a lot of power. You don't want to do that. So I'm playing a 30 hertz test tone and I'm getting right at 10 volts. And now I'm going to adjust the infrasonic filter until I get 10 times 0.708, which is 7.08 volts. It takes a bit of a steady hand and it's hard to nail it exactly right at 7.08, but bam, right there, that's close enough. Now it's time to connect some speakers and start dropping the bass. I have an entire playlist showing how you can use a multimeter to set up an amplifier. Click on this right here if you want to watch those videos. If you don't want to do that, you can click on the subscribe button right here and join me on my next adventure. I want to say a special thanks to Hi5 Vega and 123Toid for letting me use some of their footage in this video. If you want to check out their channels, I'll give you some links down in the description.